Okay, I want to pull up a couple of formulas today. And I realize that I have some homework questions to go over. I just was wanting to wait until I cover everything and then cover the homework questions and do a review and all that good stuff. But what I wanted to get in today, we've already talked about we've already talked about mean, 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 median mode with the the data set, meaning like test grades, uh, weights, measures, whatever. Uh, now we're and we talked about Z scores and how to find the Z score. Now we're going to talk about frequency distribution. How do you find the mean and the standard deviation of a frequency distribution when you're not even given the data? In other words, you're not given the test scores. You're not given the. You're just given 90 to or 90 to 100 or 90 to 99A, and you're given. Um, 80 to 89B and 70 to 79C, and you need to find the mean and standard deviation of the class. And all you're given is A, B, C's, and D's. So how do you find the mean and standard deviation? Well, that's what we're fixing to find out. Now, I would especially, I would tell you to especially be be attentive to this section because you have to do it by hand. Now, you might find a way to do it on a calculator, but not without going through seven steps when it only takes five steps to do it by hand. You see what I'm saying? Um, and if you can find a way to do it on a calculator, more power to you. But I don't think it's feasible unless you go through multiple steps. Okay? Um, well, I was supposed to, I thought I saved it. Evidently, I didn't. Let me go back to my picture that I thought I saved. Hold on just a second. Maybe I didn't save it. Oh, I saved it. There, there it is. Okay, let me try it again. This PC. We go to downloads. There it is. And this is not the best that I've gotten, but this is the one that came up on Google this morning. Go ahead and write those down. You don't necessarily have to write down the variance because what's the difference between the variance and the standard deviation? What is the relationship between the standard deviation and the variance? The square root. So really, you don't need the variance unless somebody asks you for it. Just write down these two. Okay. Now I'm going to go over it and something else I want you to do, I want you to put brackets around this because this is one of the mistakes that people make. They think that N is multiplied by this whole thing and it's not. N is multiplied by this. So I tell the students to put brackets around this. That helps students out a lot. And while you're doing that, we're going to, I'm going to put a frequency distribution up. I'm just going to make one up. And we're going to call it uh, grades. And number. So 90 to 99 or 100, whichever. Doesn't matter. Is 5, 80 to 89, 6, 
Now, the best way to show you how to do this is the spreadsheet because it has everything on it. I mean, I can show you everything on this board without writing. You see how big I write? I never would be able to get all this on the board if I didn't do it by spreadsheet. So let me go to the spreadsheet. Oh, well, I'll, well I can pull it up in the spreadsheet too. So I will give everybody a few minutes more seconds to write it down. So where's Marie going to hit? Puerto Rico, I know that. Okay, where is it going to hit in the United States? Are they saying yet? You have a work email. What'd you say, Hubert? When I ask a question, what are you supposed to do? Two things. Enunciate and volume. Uh -huh. When y'all ask me a question, I'm going to go, uh -huh. Although Dr. Harden, bless his heart, H-A-R-D-E-N, he's they got a plaque up at Clem Clemson, up at Clemson. And there's two ways to pronounce Clemson, you know. People that grew up around here, how do you say it? Clemson. It's got a P in it, all right? If you're not from around here, you don't want to be associated with the redneck, so you say clam zine. You ever watch the ESPN? Clam zine. Here we are in clam zine, South Carolina. I never heard of clam zine. I don't know about y'all, but Clemson. Anyway, there's a plaque up there. Dr. Harden had taught up at Clemson for like 115 years, and he was the head of the department, math department up there. And he was about four foot tall, and he wore, he wore, well, we'll get into that, but anyway, <laughs> that's the way he talked. I mean, he grunted, and he, he, would, he would start a sentence, and he would go, well, x squared is equal to four, and, <laughs> and that last part was, you know how to do this. So you had to get used to it. Yeah. So I'm going to start answering y'all's questions like that. Okay? So does anybody, has anybody seen on the news where Maria is going to hit the United States? Oh. Okay. Thank you. Y'all all suck. Y'all know that? I just haven't paid attention to Maria myself. I need to watch the news a little bit more. Of course, y'all don't watch the news at all, so... Ignorance is the best policy, right? But the least you know, the better, right? All right. Here we go. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. So I'm going to take this down, and we're going to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. 
And we're going to put these in. I hope y'all can tell me what I wrote. All right. 90 to 99. I know that part. And how many? Five. Five. And 80 to 89 is how many? Six. Six. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. 70 to 79. Eight. 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 And 60 to 69. Five. Five. And that's five. And then 50 to 59 is what? Four. Four. Now, right now, we have F. That's F. Why don't we have X? Well, how do you know what we need, Hubert? Well, go back to the, go back to the, uh, hold on a second. I can't stand for stuff to be on one side. I'm a little OCD there. Uh, insert. Where's the dang picture? There we go. Download. Okay, as I told you before, look at the formula. Read the formula. What does that say? Summation of F times what? X. X. We have F. We don't have X. Okay, so what is X? X is... The midpoint. I love when I do this because students go, midpoint what? Well, let me ask you a question. We've already established that F is these numbers right here, correct? What's the only other numbers that we have in the problem? The lower, lower class and the what? Upper class. So what do you think the midpoint is? Of, middle, of the lower class and the middle class. Those are the only two numbers. These are the only two numbers we have left. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find the midpoint of these two numbers, which is the highest plus the lowest divided by what? Two. So equals parentheses, highest, lowest, plus the highest, whatever, divided by two. Then copy that down. Now, these are the two. We'll color them light green. Okay, those are the two sets of numbers that you will use for your formulas. Okay, well, what's N? Well, we haven't found N yet. I'm fixing to show you N. What I tell you N always was. So you're not going to add these up. These are, these are letter grades. So you're going to add these numbers up. So how many students we got in class? 28. Oh, man, how many who in this class? 28. I've predicted what y'all are going to make. People say, people going to make an F in this class. Yep. So if you ever meet somebody that made an F in my class, back away slowly from them. Because something might rub off on you. I don't know, something. Just back away slowly. Because if you ever meet somebody that made an F in my class, they're either one of two things. And I'll let you fill in those blanks. I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> that's one of them. And that's the other one. All right. So what do you do? You read the formula. So read the formula. What is the mean? What do we do? We take F times what? X. And then what do we do to F times X? Well, what's in front of it? You add them up. So take F times X. So we need another column called what? Priority one message coming in on a secure chat. Thought I'd turn it down. Sorry. Y'all supposed to go into cardio infarction when my phone goes off. You know, do the funky chicken on the floor and all that stuff. <laughs> Have y'all got a teacher? Has anybody got a teacher that does that? Oh, so they're, they're kind of mellowing out now. Oh, listen, we've had some that'll just go crazy. All right, so make another column and call it F times what? X. So do that. F times X. 
and that's going to be equal to this number times this number. Let's see, I need my whiteboard and F, and F times X, I'm going to color that blue. And we're going to take our handy dandy highlighter. Okay, well that's about, I'm going to change it. I'll just do what I can. All right, so here's F times X here. Here's F times X here. Here's F times X here. No more sneezing in class. And F times X, that's it. Okay. No, it's not. That's, you took the bait, y'all took the hook, line, and sinker. Y'all took it. All right? That is F times what? F times X squared. It's not F times X quantity squared. F times X quantity squared is right here. Now, I do that to every single class in 103 and 102 or 120. So don't feel bad, okay? I wait for a few minutes, for a few seconds, and wait, and I go, okay, and that's all the F times X is. And somebody says, no, there's F times X squared. All right, I do that for a point. That is not F times X quantity squared. This is. Okay? Is there a difference between this and this? Oh, yes, a lot of difference. Okay, so you need to make that distinction. You need to somehow put it in your formula that they're different. So, let's see. We've got F. We've got the summation of F. We've got that. We've got N. Got N, N, got F, got F. So, what's the only other thing we need? X squared. X squared. We need a column called X squared. Now, I'm going to put X squared over here. Somebody tell me why you think I'm going to do that. It's real simple. It's not mathematical or anything. Why do you think I'm going to put it over here? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Because I don't want to mix it up. And when you're multiplying these things, it's easy to mix things up. So, x squared is going to be equal to x, which is what? And that's going to be raised to the what? Second power. Be careful. Do not go with the wrong number. Some people go to the f. And they square F and get 25, 36, 64. That won't work. And I'm going to color that orange. Some kind of orange. No, I don't want to color that orange. I'm going to leave that white. And no. <coughs> and then we need F times what? F times X squared. So that's going to be equal to F times X squared, which is this one right here. And this one will color orange. Okay, so now we take our handy dandy. Highlighter. And let's see, we've got F times X. 
and that's right there and right there and right there let's take our orange do I have an orange highlighter I guess I do right there and that's f times x squared that's there and that's there and then we'll take our we got to highlight one more thing though I'm doing this for a reason and we'll highlight this yellow or yellow depending on where you're from and that means that we're going to highlight summation of f is another way of writing what n got n there got n there got n there got in there and got in there. So why did I highlight all this stuff? Y'all can answer that. That's not rhetorical. Why did I highlight everything? Exactly. You have everything to do the formula. Now all you have to do is read the formula. Now the only thing that I request is that you take red brackets and you put right here and right here do you see why I say do that because a lot of people look at that n and they think they're multiplying the n times that whole numerator okay and that's not the case why because you've got a subtraction symbol in there the first one has to be way bigger than the second one or you'll end up with a what and you can't take the square root of a what all right so that's the way to check your answer Make sure that your front number is a BA number, but it's got to be bigger than the second number or something's wrong. So, why don't we go ahead and find those summations now? All right, this one says summation of F times X. So that's right here. So we'll color that blue. Let me get my cursor back. And, oops, sorry right here color that blue and add them up and that's f times x f times x squared that gum unpopular this morning I just have to wait it was just the governor I saw See, there we go. And I think we got everything. Now, here we go. Mean. I'm going to put everything on here so you can put it in your notes. I'm not going to calculate it yet. Equals. And what is the equal? F of X, that's this number. Divided by what? in Hubert there's the two numbers and you're ending up with and I'm gonna say equals I can't put an equal sign I can if I switch the format but I don't feel like doing that equals and that's equal to oh lord hello my boss is calling Does she don't know I'm in class why is my boss calling I'm in class? Hold on just a second. That's usually not good. I don't think she's calling to tell me I got a raise. Okay. Tried to answer. I did try to answer. She must have hung up. Okay, here we go. Uh, equals and that's equal to sorry this guy divided by what 28 so there is your mean so write that down so what's the average of the class the C average now be, be sure you understand what you just did because a lot of people go through a whole semester of probability statistics they have no idea what they're doing all right, this is one of the times where you need to know what you're doing. You're taking a frequency distribution 
that has no, you don't have any test grades, none, and you're finding the mean. Now, what is the two most important numbers in statistics? The mean and the standard deviation. So you're being able to find the mean and the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. Now you're going to be able to find the mean and the standard the mean and the standard deviation of blondes, brunettes, and redheads. No. Somebody give me the midpoint of brunette. You can't do it. Okay? Somebody give me the midpoint of blonde. Somebody give me the midpoint of brunette. You can't do it. If you have non, if you have quantitative data, qualitative, sorry. Qualitative data, you can't do. You can't mix apples and oranges and get apples. You can't mix qualitative data with quantitative data and get quantitative data. You can't do it. Okay? So blondes, brunettes, and redheads, you just have to figure out which one is the the average. Just figure out which one you think is the average. Okay? All right, so there's the mean. So we'll color that bright green because that's very important. And we'll put big old do jiggers around it and make it bold and all pretty. There we go. There's the number. All right. So now we find the standard deviation. I'm going to draw this out for you. Standard deviation, well, I'll do the variance because at the end we just take the square root. Okay, so variance. N. N is equal to that times equal to uh, F times X squared right here. We're going to minus equals what? The summation of F times X what? That's this one. Oh, I did it. See? You got to watch it. I just did it bass backwards. Sorry. You got to be careful. Because I'll, I'll do it also, f times x squared. There we go. And then this is equal to, now, I'm not worried about it. What would have told me I was wrong? Well, I would get a negative because this number wouldn't be big enough. So it'll catch you. All right? All right, this is f times x quantity squared. It kind of messes me up to not have my there. Okay, f times x squared. So that's equal to, this one's equal to this number. And then <sighs> happens when your boss calls in the middle of a class. Very unusual. And then divided by n times what? Now n minus one, I think y'all can get that. Okay. All right, now calculate that. Well, I figure out why my boss is calling me in the middle of class. Somebody probably is offended. Oh, Lord. Call me later. Let me see what the hell I've done now. <laughs> About meeting on Friday. All right. So here we go. Variance equals, and that's equal to, it's going to be a BA number. This number times this number. Minus this number raised to the what? 
at the power. Now this is when you check it. You say to yourself, which one's bigger? And that's supposed to be the bigger one. N times N minus 1? Is it just like when you actually look it out? I'm confused about that. You, you take N and multiply it times N minus 1. You do? Okay. It's always going to be one bit less right here. Okay. So I'm fixing to do that right now. So that's equal to 28 times what? 27, which is going to be close to 900, isn't it? Somewhere around there. Okay, 756. 30 times 30 is 900. Okay, so I don't mess up my highlights and everything. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to carry this over here. So equals this number minus this number over this number. So the variance is equal to this number divided by what? And there's your variance. That, but you round at the very end. Always round at the very end. You never round. In fact, I tell students to carry everything five digits through the whole, so that way you're sure. And when you round, it's when you're fixing to type in the answer. That's when you round. I think they dedicate a whole paragraph or a page in your book to rounding. And basically all they got to say is round at the very end. All right. So I'm going to put that. I'm not going to put that in a box because that's not really important. I'm going to put this in the box. Standard deviation is equal to that's equal to this raised to the what? One half power or 0.5 power. And there is your other very important number. So now you have just found the mean and the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. So hey, I can draw a curve now. Put the mean in the middle. And what goes to the right? This number plus the standard deviation. And you can carry that out several div deviations. And on the left side, what do we do? Minus the standard deviation. And you can carry that out. So if you wanted to draw a handy dandy curve, now let's color it in using the empirical rule. We know and we'll color for red, we'll color red the outliers because that's your six foot seventh graders or six foot third graders. So if you make a 35 in this class, you pretty much are an outlier. Or if you make 116 in this class, with this class that we're talking about here, then you're an outlier. Unusual would be blue, there's your unusual, and there's your unusual, and then your normal, as my daughter said, and she's now called Charleston, normal, when she was little she called it normal, normal would be right there. Now let's put in the percentages. Well, since we're including the outlier, that's like 0.2. 
This is 2.3. This is 13.5. This is 34. And then the other side is the same thing. So 95% of the population is going to fall between 49 and 101. And you feel good about yourself. All right, who's got questions? Put my pen down, and I'm just going to sit here. Who's got questions? So I've covered it so well that y'all don't have any questions. Um, so I don't know. Whenever I have, I have problems labeling the stuff in the so you just get the mean and then add the standard deviation to subtract it. That's basically what. That's the whole point of statistics. Yes. If I was to wrap. All of what we're doing, except for the Z scores, everything else is based on the mean and standard deviation. So, if there's anything that you learn out of this first unit, there's two things Z scores, you need to know how to do that, and at least how to find the mean and standard deviation of anything you're given, and what does it mean? What does it mean, like a definition? What does it mean? And that's what it means. Right there. Now, what is the definition of the mean? It's the number that represents what? No what? Starts with a V. A. R. Variation. No variation. In other words, instead of going like this, the number that represents no variation <coughs> is the number that's represented by the average. So at 75, if you was to graph these, be looking like that. But at no variation would be 75. 75 means that everybody in the class, that was what everybody made, depending on the, the numbers that were given. So if I was to give, y'all know what redistribution is, right? The student that makes A, a 95, I take 20 points off their grade, and I give it to somebody that made a 45. <coughs> You still have a 75, but that brings somebody up that didn't study as hard. How do you like that? Y'all don't like grade redistribution? Why not? That's an interesting concept. I'll just leave it at that. All right, let's change, let's change some more. Let's change the grades. Now I'll let y'all do this one. If you can't do it, then just... Drum it up as what? Failure. And tell your mom and dad you need to quit class, quit school. All right, let's let's throw let's make this an easy class or a hard class. Let's say it only had two A's. Oops. Dang, no. False. Let's go up here. There we go. Two A's. Three B's. You can do it if you want to. Uh, let's say there's four, and then eight, and then ten. All right, now you do it on a separate sheet of paper and see what you get. I'll give y'all a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. Please remind me to start the video again. Yeah, where they try to get like the lowest grade they can so they can put in the curve because they like statistics so much. That's the way some psychology teachers play. Um, you notice that you've got a D average. So you, notice, you know that's probably correct because look at the grades. I mean, you got eight daggum Ds and ten Fs. So you got a lot of people living in the ditch there. You only got you know, what eight, nine people that are winners. The rest of them pretty much suck. So that 66 says that. Now the standard deviation. What was our standard deviation on the last problem? Okay. Why do you think it's smaller here? Because you got more grouped up people on the on the right. 
Which what the data gives us of what curve? Skewed which way? Skewed which way? Skewed, well, we well, know the lower numbers are on the left, so it'd be like it'd be skewed left. I'm sorry, skewed right because your data is on the left. Your low numbers are on the left. Huh? I got it right. So I'll give y'all a few more minutes to finish up. Huh? Do you understand it or are you just being facetious? I seriously do. Well, good. Like, I've never did good in that. Well, that's a good thing. You did good. You've done good. I've never did good. I've never done good. I ain't got no. All right, who's got questions? Like, You're finding the mean and standard deviation okay. of that frequency distribution of, of theta. Okay, so you should just have two numbers at the end of the problem. <laughs> now I'm going to give y'all like 28 problems like this. It'll take you like three days to do the test. you probably get one like this on the test. Yeah, you could pretty much say you're going to get, if I give you 10 questions, you're going to get um, three Z scores, three data set means statistics, and then one of these, and then two definitions out of chapter one and two or something like that. That's how I break it. Yeah. Which question? We're talking about the A and B Yeah. So would that be the same midpoint as the other Yeah, that didn't change, I don't think. Where? 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 Probably. So I'm finished. Basically, I'm finishing today. But that means now. Well, let me let me just talk about that for just a minute. All right. Does anybody have any questions on this? We'll probably go over it again because somebody's going to send in a question about it. Somebody's going to send in a homework question, and we'll do it again. All right. Now, what's going to happen when y'all come back? What's today? Thursday. When y'all come back Thursday, this is what's going to happen. Let me just do this because I ain't going to repeat myself because I can't stand to repeat myself. Let me go to the whiteboard. I'll put this back up in just a minute if anybody needs to check the work. All right, write this in your notes because I don't want anybody answering, asking these questions after class. One, or right, let me just do here are things for Thursday. Somebody give me the date. What is Thursday? The 19th? Nine what? 20? One? 17. I have to put that because what Thursday? Okay, one. We will go over homework problems. Two. We will go over a test. What does 
is a test mean? It's the test that comes up when I pull it up, but when you pull it up, it's going to be totally different, but the same type questions, just to show you what I test you on. Okay? We will go over the test. Now, this could be put off till Tuesday, depending on homework review. What does that mean? If we get a bunch of questions, and I know there's a lot on there. So far, I think there's like 10. All right? So if we get a bunch of these questions, and I'm not able to go over the test, then that means going over the test. Is everybody listening? Okay. <laughs> I am. All right. That means everybody, we're going to push the test from Thursday to what? To Tuesday. It's called common what? Sense. Sense. The Hammies, they don't, they don't do this. They, they, the, what they do is I go over the homework problems, and they don't look at this. And the first thing they say, they come up to me after we go over those homework problems. They say, when's the test? When's the test? And I just look at them like they're crazy. Send in some questions. So we do it what? What? Send in questions so we do it on Tuesday. Yeah, that's, that's what everybody does. But I, I see that. So what I do is I pick the same type. If there's five of the same type question, instead of going over five, we'll go over one. Okay. All right. So, and if we go over the test, that means if we go over the test, if we, I have to put this, if we go over the test, a day will be announced. And Four, if we, no, not if, when, when we go over the test, homework, termination, don't look right, date, will be announced. Okay, one more thing. I hate when it doesn't terminate, termination. And this is all, this is, ter this is technology. When I set the dates, my labs plus will post them beside the assignments. So that way, if you're not here Thursday, let's say you're not here Thursday and you get sick Tuesday, and you want to know when the date and the homework is due, what do you do? You go to My Labs Plus and you look with the side and see what what's due. Do not email me. Do not text me. Do not call me because I will not respond. I'll say I have no idea. All right, who's got questions for me? Now, you need to do the homework in, I think it's 3.5 and 3.6. I don't know which one it is, but one of them has these frequency distributions in them. Make sure you do a couple before you before Thursday so you can send a homework question. Yes. Okay, 3.4, 3.5. It's one of those sections. Yes, sir. Okay, y'all have a good day. I'll just do attendance. I'll just say everybody's here. Yep.